We're going to do another Epsilon Delta proof. This one is again slightly more difficult than the one before. It's still a polynomial though, but yeah, we'll crack it. Okay, so again, because it's a polynomial, it is uh, continuous. So if you just sub in the value that x tends to, you'll be able to work out what the, the limit is. But yeah, we'll prove it by epsilon delta. Okay, so same strategy in the previous video. The only difference is we have these sort of extra terms here, but the proof goes almost exactly the same. Okay, so let's find epsilon. So I'll write the implication again. So 0 less than x minus what x tends to 1 less than delta implies absolute value of the function. minus the limit less than epsilon epsilon okay so again we're going to start with the right hand side the consequent and manipulate it so that it looks like the left hand side the antecedent okay so let's do that so okie dokie so x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x the ones cancel it's less than epsilon but I, I won't write that now so again remember this is not a proof we're just finding the value of delta in terms of epsilon once you've got that value then you do an epsilon delta proof but so the most difficult part is finding delta in terms of epsilon there. Yeah. So the way I like to think about doing this is let's just get rid of the absolute value signs for a second. And I'm going to write equivalence. So when dealing with polynomials, there are some cool things you can do. So we, we want to get this out as a factor of this. So let's just assume it is a factor. X minus 1. Now, let's multiply it by, so we need a cube term, so we're going to have a squared term here, but we don't know what the coefficient of the x squared is going to be, so let's just put a variable in, or a constant. Now, we need a, so because this is of degree 3, and this is of degree 1, the degree of the two polynomials that are multiplying that are factors of this polynomial must be equal to 3 so yeah okay so stick another b x in there since we don't have a constant term at the end of this polynomial we don't put another constant term here so this is sufficient so now let's just expand that out so this sort of means equivalent to, so expand it out, or the same for all values of x, so expand it out, a x cubed plus b x squared minus a x squared minus b x, okay, so let's, uh, collect like terms and factor the uh, x squareds out. So we get a x cubed plus b minus a x squared minus b x. Okay, that should all make sense. So, since, so now what we have to do is we have to find the values for a and b. So the way we do that is we look over on the left hand side and we substitute the coefficients for these values and we see if they're the equations we get for the constants a and b are consistent if they're not consistent then it gets a bit more tricky 
But let's go through this and we'll see that they are consistent. So A equals 1. B minus A, 1 equals 2. And B equals 3. If we plug 3 in over here, get 3 minus 1 equals 2. So the equations are all consistent. Okay, so that's good. So now we know the value for A and the value for B. So let's put them here. Excuse me. So this was in absolute values, and again, the absolute value of the product is the product of the absolute values. So absolute values. So now we've got our factor, our Yeah, our left hand side of the implication and so we need to remove that and so we're going to do the exact same thing we did in the last proof so suppose delta whoops it is suppose delta equals one yep so what will this equal so zero less than no, so not what that will this equal. What are the upper and lower bounds for this if delta equals 1? So again, let's just consider that. So you get x minus 1 less than 1. So that is equivalent to minus 1 less than x minus 1 less than 1, which is equivalent to add 1, 0, less than x, less than 2. Okay, so now we can use this upper and lower bound to find the upper and lower bound of the polynomial here. And then we have a value that we can substitute for this. So we can get epsilon, well delta in terms of epsilon, Time multiplied by a constant or divided by a constant. Okay. So, so let's square it. 0 less than x squared less than 4 multiplied by 3. 0 less than 3x less than 6. So then we get x squared plus 3x less than 4 plus 6 less than 10. And since this is always positive, it'll also hold for the absolute value. So it's always positive because of the constraint we placed on delta. Okay, cool. So now we've got our upper bound that we're going to replace this with for, del for epsilon. So we know now that delta equals the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 10. So I won't do the forward part of the proof. So I won't do the proof. So you can substitute it in. But basically remember, this gives you two inequalities because the left-hand side will satisfy both the absolute value of x minus 1 being less than 1 and the absolute value of x minus 1 being less than epsilon on 10 the the inequality you get from here from the 1 will allow you to determine this or that and this epsilon over 10 will allow you to multiply the x minus 1 the absolute value of x minus 1 by 10 so then you can then replace the 10 with this because it's strictly less than so the inequality will hold yeah and manipulate 
get back to this and then the proof is done. Okay, cool. Hope that's helpful.